Okay. Uh, last week was Hungry Hippos. Uh, this week, we'll be doing Four Buttons. So just for a brief overview for those who don't know what Four Buttons is. Four Buttons is basically a, a game that was inspired by my uh, little kid. So basically, the idea of this game is meant to, you know, when babies tinker around with buttons, they don't know what, what the buttons actually do. So they just anyhow play around with it. So in this game, you also don't know what, what the buttons actually do. Then you just play around with the buttons and hopefully you find something that um, that works to solve the problem. So maybe let's just take a look how stage one is right now. So uh, these are the past few stages that have been created. I haven't added in the sound yet, but let's just maximize this. So if you see it here, like get to 106. So there's some random numbers that you can have. So like this is a plus two. This is a plus seven and this is a minus five. And so you just tinker around and then you can get to 100 like that. So stage two is select the right color. The target color is something like green. So we should try pressing the green color thing, I think. Yeah, so let's just try pressing the green. Did it hit? No, there may be a blue. Oh, orange. Ah, there we go. Then uh, stage three is a password. So password basically is like there are three, um, there's basically uh, four buttons you need to press. So this is like the toggle button. So this A, wrong, wrong. So it starts with A, C, B, no, A, C, B, C, no. So it's A, C, B, A. All right. So um, so far that's all the things that we have coded so far. So um, this is stage three. So right now today we're going to do stage four. So uh, what is stage four? Stage four is basically something like stage one. Okay. So it will. Oh, oops. It's basically you have a series of five bulbs, and then we just want to make sure that. So for stage four. Okay, this is stage four, dear. Right? So stage four, instead of having a, like the menu like this as an um, image, okay, maybe the instructions, I can change it. Stage four, stage four will be, stage four will be light up all bulbs. Hmm. Turn on all bulbs. Looks a little small, don't you think? Yeah. So maybe you just put light up all bulbs. I can just adjust this one. It will be a bit smaller. Yeah. Maybe this one can be a bit bigger. Yeah, well, you know, I could just, you know, delete this entire thing. And then decouple this, unpack prefab completely. So let's see how do we do this uh, prefab. Yeah. I can delete away the instructions button. Then instead, the stage button, we could just expand it. Yeah, stage four. Oops. Stage for light up all bulbs. Okay, so instead of this image here with a text, okay, we don't really need this text anymore, but the image can stay. Okay, we don't really need this text anymore. Let's delete this. Okay, instead, what we need is we need the maybe some this light bulb. I'll just drag it inside images. So we have one light bulb. Here we could have a horizontal layout group. Okay, and uh, over here we center at middle center. Okay, this is the light bulb. We have one. Okay, so maybe um doesn't work with images, right? Horizontal layout group. Not sure. Let's see. So this is chow one, chow two. Okay, I mean if let's say it doesn't work, we can take away the horizontal layout group. Because it doesn't make much difference. The light bulb, we could just space them out ourselves. Something like maybe I'll just use no. I'll just change the x coordinate. 
so that is more uniform. So maybe this one can be minus 10, minus 100, minus 300, minus 200, minus 100, zero. I'm just seeing what's the best alignment, 100. Okay, so it looks like it's not that well aligned like that. Maybe here can be 200. So the 100 and 300 looks okay. The in between the bulbs, I just need to space it to make it like maybe this 100. Okay, maybe I got it minus 150. Zero. 150. Aha, there we go. Yeah, so it's a total of five bulbs that we want to light up, all of them. And the initial color of all these bulbs is either yellow or white. So yellow, if it's uh, lighted up, we could just use FFFF00. It's either yellow or white for the initial color for this. So the effect, this sprite, we could change to Yeah, something like that. I don't know, does it look good? Yeah, I think it looks alright. Yeah, I think it looks alright. Okay, so um now in this case we need to do this is because this is a light bulb. All right. Okay, let's see what other scripts I have used for this. I have used a light bulb already, so we cannot call this light bulb. Let's call this all bulb. Let's just call it all about because <laughs> the earlier light bulb was about color. Then uh, this light bulb is about position of the light bulbs. Okay, so let's just copy and paste the number count script because we'll be using something like that. So we call it all about. Okay, so in this script, uh, instead of like having a public in go num over here, we have five light bulbs. Okay, so we can use a boolean to represent it. Okay, so let me just edit this function a bit. Okay, so like this set random or this, we will change it accordingly. Okay, so the go num, there's no longer any go num. So it's just basically going to be, we can either use a string or we can use a boolean array. So um, I'm actually neutral to, to any of them. Yeah, let's just use a boolean array that... Uh, Yeah, maybe like this, yeah. Yeah, like that. And booleans will be initialized to false by default. Okay, so solution count can be the same. Num range, we don't need this because no need to do this num range, num text, button text, okay. Um, all this um can be kept on can be kept back. Uh, actually, we don't need a num text anymore because uh, there's no text to display. See, it's all light box. So yeah, we just need the solution count. Okay, all this can change. Start num, current num. Um. Okay, so this one we shouldn't call it bool. This one should call it uh go. Go um. Uh, maybe we just call it go and then maybe we could have this as current so we do have all this um, start num is compute win sequence. Okay, we don't need to compute win sequence. Okay, let's see what's what's compute win sequence over here. So this was to apply a random operation to the to the goal num. Yeah, so actually we need that. So maybe we just call this current config and we call this goal config so that it's easier to understand. And then we have a, a start config. 
Okay, and uh, what we do here is we have the start config will be equal to this. Okay, let's see how do you okay, how do you return uh, an array in C sharp. Yeah, because we do need to return a, a boolean array right now when we do this so in order to return a boolean array yeah we could just return this like return the name of the array without the brackets then you can return the entire array already yeah cool okay so uh, we don't need to code anything new here. So start config can be equals to config compute win sequence. Okay, so yeah, this set random. I think there might still be a need for set random, but we can do that later. Okay, let's just comment out this set random first. Okay, and then just comment out this entire thing first. Print num, we definitely don't need to do that. Oh, but actually we do need to do something similar. So it's like display bulk. We just call it display bulk. And then over here we pass in the boolean of something. Yeah, so based on the config here, uh, we can just like have uh, so over here we do need to have a uh... okay so this light bulb is a sprite renderer so sprite renderer color unity so i do believe the function class is called sprite renderer and then we can set a new color so here we have sprite renderer and then we can have this okay sprite random variable box okay so this will give us the this should be a public variable this will give us the um the, the box position so when we have this update uh we will do for each bool uh, color in actually no we shouldn't do a for each like that we should just do a for int i equals zero i smaller than config dot length I plus plus or config dot counts. I believe in uh, in C sharp array is a count. How do you count elements? It's a dot counts. Yeah, so we can do dot counts. I equals zero. I small. So what we will do is if okay. So we if config equals to okay so the initial color here for the light bulb we can actually do color dot white and color dot yellow okay to make it easier so if config i is true okay so it, we can just put if config i uh what we do is uh if config i we can then uh, make the light bulb color so bulb i dot color equals to color dot yellow okay if it's true then it'll be yellow okay else well i dot color equals color dot white yeah so um this will just toggle the display the about color accordingly based on config yeah so based on the current configuration if the configuration is, is true then we display the bulk color as yellow if not it will, it will display as white so in the update here also if config okay uh, we, we need to do like yeah we probably will need to do a condition to check whether the config
maybe we just put has one and then we just uh put in two pass in two variables here actually we don't really need to do the pass in here we can just do a has one okay and then over here we can do public void has one or public bool has one okay and then we just check for integer i equals zero i smaller than um maybe we do current config dot count i plus plus okay we just check whether so what we do is to make sure that all the bulbs are on so the goal config over here um as of now the goal config is always all on so we can just check if current config i equals equals to goal config i or if it's not equals then we return false otherwise we return true so um if if all light bulbs are on or all light bulbs the bulbs are same as the goal config so if all the bulbs are in the same configuration then we will win and then we will load the next scene if not we will continue and continue okay so now uh what else do we do we, we did the display bulb execute function we can still do the same uh okay over here we need to do a display bulb like that okay uh Okay, compute win sequence. So, uh, compute win sequence will be very very similar to what we did for stage one. Okay, instead of um using a number as our win sequence, uh, as the win condition, like in stage one we wanted to count to hundred. Okay, but in this stage four, what we want to do is we want to make all light bulbs on. So it is is it is similar to this, but it's not the same. Okay, um. The thing that we need to do is we need to okay the apply operation will still be the same it's a range from zero to three zero three means uh, zero one or two okay we don't count the last number here okay zero one two so there are three operations and then the last one could be a reset yeah which which is fine actually so i yeah, you know we have the start config over here where is it yeah start config this can save the initial config and then we can reset from there. So um, what we can do here is we could do compute win sequence. So we have a uh, initial state which will be equals to the code num. Okay, what we'll do is we have to we have to copy an array like we need to create a new array. So go new sequence equals to new bool 5 okay so we can just do like new sequence equals to goal sequence so we start from the goal sequence okay. we call it goal sequence right if i remember correctly up here yeah goal config sorry goal config so we can just call this new config and that to be go config. Okay, we don't need to bring this. Okay, apply up to solution count number of operations to the go now. So we will do a backtracking from the go configuration. We backtrack and we apply our operations zero, one, and two in order to you know to to reverse engineer what we did. So that when the player plays, he needs to click the same operations in the reverse order in order to get all the bulbs to be lighted up. Okay. So the good thing about this bulb thing is that even if you do backwards or forwards, the operation is the same. So if like one switch toggles about um the first bulb, you do a reverse, it's also, it also toggles. So the reverse and forward for this case is the same. Yeah. Apply up to solution count number of operations to the goal num. I equals zero, I smaller than solution count, I plus plus. Okay, we could do that. Um 
and then we need to apply the new config equals to apply configure apply operation new config and then at the end we just return new config over here will be a bool Same here, this will be a bool as well. And then um, we have the, in the button, and then we have a so I guess we will call this config and Actually, this reverse is not very important here because the configuration forward and backwards are the same. So what we could do is uh, let's just toggle about individually for now. Okay. Yeah. So Now we can just toggle the maybe just zero one and two. Okay, I mean I'm just being simple, simplistic here. Let's just do such that uh we do the same for the start and the we, we do the same for the reverse and the forward until I can think of something else. Okay, else return. Okay, so this one needs to change, okay? Um If button is three, then what we need to do is we need to return our start sequence, our start config over here because there's a reset button. Okay, else we re return config. Yeah, that's more or less what we do for apply operation. Oh, where am I? Yeah. Okay, execute button. So when you um, click on the button, you have the button number to update the button press. Okay, which uh, basically what we'll do is we'll just update the number button press by one. And then if the button press more than the threshold, then we'll display what the button is doing. So yeah, over here, let's just change this text to... Yeah, let's just put some dummy text over here because it's not really the same as... Let's put some dummy text here. The reset is still the same, but the first three buttons are different. Okay, this set random later will change it accordingly. I just want to see whether this is working first. So display bulb will change the bulb configuration. Okay, apply operation. This one need, needs to change also. So this one needs to be current config. Because current config will be the one that will contain what is to be changed. So this one will be current config also. Display bug current config, and then we add press to the game manager. Okay, compute win sequence we check already. So after compute new sequence, we will actually need to set. Yeah, start config will be equals to this. Yeah, so this new config when it's written, it will pass into start config. And then we need to let's just see whether there's a fast way to copy an array into another array in C sharp. Oh, I could just do a dot copy, is it? Yeah, a dot copy. You know what? I don't think I need to use this method. I could just you know do my own. <laughs> so you see over here there's a there's a reset, right? Then start config, right? So what we could do is we could do a okay, is there a reset anywhere? A reset um is there a reset operation somewhere? No, I didn't code for reset. Yeah, 
Uh, but actually, it is just this start config. I could just do something like this. So from the start config, we could just make current config be equals to start config. Yeah, so this will do our starting uh, configuration for the bulk. Uh, you know, maybe a string would be easier than I don't do this for loop for the bool. But you know, since I use bool, I mean just for practice, I think it's fine. Yeah, it's just the boolean array is a bit more uh, tedious because we need to do a for loop over the array like that. I mean, if we use a string, then you can just you know this this copying of a string is a one step thing. You don't need a for loop. Yeah, but behind the scenes, actually, there's also a for loop when you copy the string. So. It's just whether we want to be explicit about it or we let the backend data structure handle the for loop. So to me, no difference. Okay, over here we do have a print num current num, which what should we change to? We should change it to display bulk because that will display the bulk color. In fact, maybe we don't even need to put current config because you know current config is a public variable. Oh, sorry, it's a private variable which will be accessible to all functions. Test one, okay. Yeah, actually, maybe we don't need to do this. Just do this play box without the config because um, there's no need to give current config when it's a good when it's a private variable. That display bulk, okay. We can take display bulk here. Yeah, we can take away the okay. All these are done. So, uh, what, what the operation does is first button toggles the first bulk, second button toggles the second bulk, third button toggles the third bulk, and apply five operations to it. Okay, so I guess we are more or less done here. Let's uh just brace for errors. I just remove this component. Okay, all box types expected. Line number nine. Aha. Uh -huh. I make a rookie mistake again. So, so this should be a bool and this one should be a bool. Right. Oh, uh, this is still got number count. This one should be called all about because um, the script title should match the C sharp script name. Boo does not contain a definition for count. Okay, let's take a look. Uh, boo array in C sharp. Maybe I implemented it wrongly. So to set a boo array is like that. Boo array, isn't it correct? Yeah, I did it correctly. So what's this error? Boo does not contain a definition for count and no accessible. So let's see. Length of Boolean array in C sharp. I wonder if there's another method for bool array. Yeah, because I think a count method should work. Hmm. How to get size of bool array? How to get length? Uh, 
I'm going to click this replace all by five, but I want to know how to do it. Yeah, array.count. This is how we do it. How do we get the length of the array? Wow, so cool. You can do jagged arrays in C sharp where you have two different dimensions. The first and the second second. Oh sorry, jagged array just means that yeah, your second ar array, the size is not fixed. <laughs> Deep. Wow. Interesting. Setting items, getting reverse and array. Is there a function to reverse? Oh, there is. Array.reverse. Interesting. Oh, that's a clear also. Yeah, these are new to me. Yeah, get the size of an array. Get length zero. Ah, you can even clone the array. Do a dot clone or dot copy. Oh, nice! You could do this clone. Man. Something dot clone. Oh, wow. The references in the new array point to the same object that references in the original array point to. That's not that good. <laughs> yeah, we want a totally new array. So it looks like the bool array length C sharp. I think it is a dot length. Let's just see whether dot length works. If not, I can use get length zero. But it works. Okay, so next, the name config does not exist in current context. So this config here does not exist. So it should be a current config. So it's current config. Okay, let's separate it. The name bulk does not exist in current context. Line number 105. So bulk i. So what did I call it? I call it bulbs. So this one should be called bulbs i. This is bulbs i also. Bool does not contain a definition for count 1 to 6. So this one I'll change to length. Okay, it looks like we cleared all the errors. I'm just going to put this, I'm just going to put the all about script here. Okay, so the go config will be here. In fact, actually the go config, uh, yeah, I could just put it here. Maybe I'll just set it to be all true. Yeah, you can just set it to be true as default instead of false as default and then we have a button text 
Okay, and the button text, guess where we'll get the text from? We'll get it all from the buttons itself. So there are four texts over here. Let's uh, lock this menu here. Okay, then we can copy this four text with the control button. Or in Mac, is a command button, and you just put here. So these are the four texts that will appear on the buttons itself. Current config and start config, we don't really need to do it. So actually, this current and start config, we shouldn't make it public. It can just be private. I mean, uh, it was public before, probably for debugging purposes, but we don't need it to be public. Okay, we do need uh, bulbs to be public. So where's my bulbs? I need to make this public. Okay, so, so that I can put in my light bulbs itself. So these five light bulbs can be put into bulbs. You can see the bulbs have the sprite renderer for this. So we, we can call this image here, we can call this a bulbs. This game object contains all the bulbs like that. You can click play and see what happens. So the first one should toggle the, the first bulb. Okay, but there's something wrong with it. Method, methods are incompatible. Hmm. Wonder what happened. Uh, because you see over here the light bulbs are displayed correctly. Okay, so there must be an error with the method itself. And I think I figured out the problem. Okay, so the problem is probably due to this on click button uh, that did not go to this all bulbs uh execute button. So uh, previously it was done with the other scripts. So it was done with number count. So we need to, to do this for every single button itself. All about. I realize this four buttons is more of a programming challenge um, than it is a UI kind of challenge. It's a lot of code needs to be done for this. It's not exactly a very beginner friendly game, I would say. I mean, to code this game, I think um, you, maybe platformers may be easier or so. But I, I kind of like the idea of this game. So you see, when you click here, it toggles the bulb. Toggles this bulb. Ta-da! Done. Okay, so uh, we need to add a scene with the pig. Do you all know why this happens? Build index 6 could not be loaded. Okay, it's because in the build settings, we haven't added the, this scene inside yet. So there's no stage 4. In Unity, they do not know uh, where we are right now. So we need to add this stage 4 here, like that. And yeah, let's just see how it goes. So we have all this. You see over here? Ah, done. OK, so it looks like it's working. So right now, next priority I have. So this one is either toggle on or off, toggle on or off. Okay. So we need to just, ta-da! Okay, so let's think of how to make our buttons more interesting. So, I mean, if you make this toggle first one, toggle second, toggle third, it's not that dynamic because um, there's, there's very few buttons. I mean, there's, we want to make it such that it is uh, difficult for the player to solve. Okay, we don't want to make it so simple that like one button corresponds to one bulb. So it could be maybe one button toggles on and off everything. Okay, that one is not random. So the one button toggle on and off everything. Maybe I won't have a reset for this. <laughs> so the last one can be toggle on and off everything. Okay. Um, this one can be toggle on and off like a certain, like maybe a random three bulbs. This one can be toggle on and off randomly two bulbs. And this one toggle on, on and off randomly one bulb. So let's get coding. Or I mean, maybe one of the the toggles could be like if uh, neighbors left and right are on then uh then that bulb will be off so if let's say this bulb is on oh i got it to make it more interesting one bulb could be rotate the rotate the rotate the bulbs one element to the right so one one of this could be a rotate to the right one could be to rotate to the right, 
uh, we don't really need a rotate to the left. So one will be rotate, one will be toggle on and off, one will be on and off. Uh, mm, let's see. One can be on and off random three box. Random two box, random three box. Yeah, uh, because I think on and off one box would be quite simple. So I'm kind of kind of like the idea to on and off uh two bulbs. Uh, or maybe we could do the random on and off thing. Yeah, maybe one the second button could be on and off two bulbs, the button on and off three bulbs, this one toggle on and off everything. Or we could just make it random two, random three, random four. Still thinking about this. Um let's see. What else could be done? I like the rotating bulb idea. So there'll be one button that uh sorry, my battery is running a bit low. Yeah, so maybe there could be one button that would rotate the bulbs. Okay, one button that rotates the bulbs and one button on toggle. Okay, so one button rotates about the left one. One button on and off everything, like toggles on and off. These two middle buttons. I'm still thinking what uh we need to do for those. So let's see. Maybe you're on the bulb at a fixed position. Yeah, maybe you're on the bulb. On two bulbs at a certain position, on two bulbs at a certain position. Yeah, because actually turning on two bulbs and turning on three bulbs are sort of the same thing, right? Yeah, all right, let's start coding. So the we won't have a we won't have a reset button anymore. So the last the last bulb here is not a reset anymore. This one will be toggle on off. Toggle all. This one will be toggle two. This one will be toggle three. This one will be shift position. So let's do it. So the execute button um, over here. Okay. So this one will toggle everything for if your i equals zero, i smaller than config dot length i plus plus. Okay, we could toggle everything. So config i equals to not config i. Okay, and we can do that the same for the reverse operation. So let's see. Yeah, so there's no need to do a reset for this. Okay. So what else? What else do we need to do? What else? So um the next thing we need to do is to do the so this is the shift position. So the position shift could be either shift by one or shift by two. I mean, to make it more interesting. <laughs> okay, maybe we just do a shift by one, okay? So a position shift will be like this, config zero. Okay, so it's the same thing as this. Uh, what we'll do is we will the button is zero, okay. We will either shift left or shift right. Okay, so what we do is config i equals to not yeah, so what we need to do actually yes we are sort of like shifting this. We need to keep the we need to make a new con. We could do this, okay, and then after that, goes to 
So we have a new config for school. Not config i minus one. Maybe we just do i minus one first. Like that. So this one will always be shift left. Okay, new config i equals not config i minus one. Uh, maybe we could make it fix because we already do a random ordering. I'm not too sure. Yeah. Then maybe what we could do next is we could then copy the. So new config is just a temporary storage area. Yeah, like this. So. This copies the configuration from the left. Okay, then when we do a reverse, we do it from the right. Yeah, so this would settle the shifting of this is a position shift. Yeah. We could make this a random number so that it's either shift left or shift right randomly. Yeah, we could do that uh, later on. So next will be button equals to goes to one this one will be toggle two okay toggle one is too easy so so how do we do a toggle two so you know let's just you know set the, the configuration right now later we can go on to to create a random um, way to do this configuration okay but for now we could just set the, the buttons this is toggle 2 this is toggle 3 maybe i do toggle 1 and toggle 2 instead toggle 2 and toggle 3 toggle 1 and uh, toggle 2 and 3 toggle 2 toggle 3 still thinking about it yeah Let's just see how it goes. Yeah. Let's just toggle two and toggle three first. Two, four, and maybe this one can be one, three, four or something like that. Yeah. Let's see how tough this is first before I decide what to do. Because uh, this is the first time I'm doing this. I'm not too sure what the difficulty is. I do not want the difficulty to be too hard, but I do not want it to be too easy either. Okay, because uh, then it will be not no fun. So something like this. So this one will be toggle or toggle three. Toggle or okay, let's see how it goes. Okay, let's go. So we test out the toggle all first. Yes, it toggles all. Shift position. Okay, there's something wrong with the shift position. Index was out of bounds by the array. So it means that um, in this shift position here, something went wrong. So um, let's see. Equals to not config. Actually, this is not a not config. Equals to config. Equals to config. Because we're just shifting the position, right? So equals to config i minus 1% 5. Why would it be out of bound though? Because uh, it looks like it's okay to me. One four seven was out of bounds. This one was out of bounds. I minus one percent five. Or maybe because uh, when you do a minus one modulo, it doesn't automatically go back to positive. So maybe I'll just do a i minus 1 plus 5 so you know it's actually a plus 4 so see yes okay so this shifts one to the right
bubbles two, bubbles three, to the right, bubble two, Double three five. Double one three four. Well, actually, it's quite hard. Three five. Then one three four. One three four. Double one three four. One. Yeah. Yeah, I kind of like the shift operator. So uh, I'm thinking maybe toggle one and toggle two will be easier because uh, toggle two and toggle three can be quite confusing. Let's just try it out, toggle one and toggle two. So yeah. toggle one, toggle two. Uh, should we label the box by their number one two three four five so that um so that we could like sort of can i add a text here okay let's see how do that how do i add this text um it's kind of not appearing so Maybe I'll have a separate thing called text, I guess. Not showing though, the text. Maybe I'll remove the image for here. Uh, it's not being shown, so it means that the text appears on a lower layer, I guess. Yeah, because if let's say I remove the background. Oh, I don't even have the text appearing. Oh, that's interesting. Maybe it's the color. Black color. It is supposed to show, I guess. So this kind of works. For this one, I guess it's going to be minus 300. Align center, X will be at no centric. Max best fit. Change a bit of the specs for fee. Minus nine fifty zero. 
300. Yeah, looks like we can display some text. So this one will be about 2, about 3, about 4, and about 5. And here we can reduce a bit. Okay, something's wrong with this right now. So maybe the position could change also. Yeah. So yeah, this is so that when we do the um, configuration for the bulbs, we could say that oh, it's about one and about two, about two and about three, and so on. So, so it'll be easier to to tell the user what kind of bulb they are looking at. So right now, let's see this bulb text here. Okay, I made it as small as possible already. Does it look weird that the bulb is the bulb text is not under the bulbs itself? Yes, it does look weird. We do should we should have a should have a sprite renderer here. What do we have in the original bulbs? We have an image. So we should have an image here. And the color here should be exactly the same as this. Yeah. Okay, maybe we can change the color a bit. Like that. Maybe the text itself will all be white color. Just thinking over here. No, I think black sounds black looks nicer. And perhaps uh, we could just match the color. Yeah, looks good. Okay, so now we either need to say shift left or shift right. Okay, so uh, how do we set the random numbers here? So we do need to set some random numbers. So let's uh, uncheck. So So the first num here will be about random dot range zero one. So it's either zero or zero one. Yeah, so this first num will be Toggle bulb shift position. And then this num2 here would be random dot range 0, 4. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 0, 5. Which one is toggle bulb uh, And the last one will be toggle two box position. Num3 equals to random dot range 0, 0.5. First box position. And then we do a number 4, random dot range 0, 0.5. Wow, num3 equals to num4. So this toggles two box. So it's either. So toggle bulbs. Toggle bulb like that. And this one is toggle bulbs. M yeah, so this toggles two bulbs shift position and this toggles all bulbs. Okay, so that's what we do. One bulb and two bulb and all bulbs. Okay, then we need to have either shift left or shift right shift. 
helps. So if num1 is 0, then it's left. If not, it'll be right. Okay, so we need to have a integer num1, num2, num3, num4. Okay, and uh, let's just do it. So this one will be toggle 1 will be just config num2, not close to num2. This one will be config num3 equals to not config num3 and this one next will be num4 not equals to num4 and then for the top here uh it's either 0 or 1 okay so so if it's 0 then it will be a plus 4 if not it'll be a minus it'll be a plus 1 so how can we do this um Uh, maybe we could just remove it num1 I'm not sure whether this will work but it's worth a shot yeah this is like a ternary operator inside Yeah, okay, so this toggle 2 should be here, toggle 1 and toggle 2. Yeah. And then what we do is we'll call the, when we start, we'll call the set random so that we set all the random numbers. So that even I, when I play this game, I wouldn't know what I'm playing because uh, everything will be new and random, which is spices things up, I guess. Cannot convert string to bool number 65. So where is it? Yeah, maybe I need to just put a bracket like that. Okay, let's see how it goes. So just Check whether this works. Toggle all bulbs. This shifts right. Okay, um, it's saying shift right, but it's actually shifting left. We will fix that later. Oops. Okay, so so it means that this quite right and left. Now, because if num one is zero, then what we do for the operations here? is we will shift it by one which is equivalent to shifting it left because you take the about position on the right so shift it right if num1 is zero then we'll plus four which is the same as taking the position on the left so that's shifting it right yeah correct so let's try that again let's try that again this stage can be potentially difficult i feel yeah this is like a logic puzzle so you can toggle all bouts like that. This is one and three. Okay, so this needs to change because it's not bout two and four. This is bout three. Actually, you can trivially solve it just by toggling one by one, right? <laughs> Yeah, so maybe maybe I should still do like two bulbs and three bulbs, you know? Yeah, because I think toggling one bulb and then if I can shift and I toggle one bulb, the solution is kind of trivial. Yeah, maybe I should do two bulbs and three bulbs. So yeah, let's just do two bulbs and three bulbs. Do this. Wow, num three two equals to num three. This one will be num three. 
and then this one will be num4, numpy, and then the last one will be num6. Num6. Yeah, so we can do num1, num2, num3, num4, num5, num6. Here will be yeah because I think it's quite trivial trivial if we could just shift the position and toggle the box. So where's my button X? Yeah. Toggle box num2. Let's just copy and paste this one. Num2 plus one. Num three plus one dot to string and then over here we will be like that. Two comma three and four num four five and six. So this will display all the box that we have. So we can just do it like that. Okay, so now then we do the toggle function. So num2, num3, num4, num5, and num6. I need some play testers in order to confirm like how difficult this is. I think toggling 2 and toggling 3 would make a better game than just toggling 1 and shifting the position. I mean, it's almost trivial if, if, <laughs> if you shift the position and you keep toggling that one box, you will definitely solve the problem. Right? 68. Oh, I forgot a plus here. Okay. All right, let's see how it goes. <laughs> I wonder if it works. Yeah, this toggles all. This shifts to the, now this is shift to the right. Toggles block two and four. Yes. Toggles block one, two, and five. Okay, here uh, we need to sort it out because like 1, 5, and 2 is like... Oh! Yeah! Yeah, so probably what would happen is that we could do it such that the first bulk, second bulk, and third bulk, we will do a, we'll do a sorting. So like here... Yeah, so yeah, there's some stuff that we need to do here in order to make sure that um the the numbers itself don't really cause an issue. Yeah, I think what we could do is we could just simply you know, just set the two positions like that. Yeah. So you know. Like that, so there's no need to, to do an ordering because it will always be consecutive. Uh, that might be like make it more smooth, smoother. Yeah, maybe like this two four and then like do this. Zero to one. Zero to two. Mm. 
I don't quite like this idea. Let's 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 undo this because I want to give flexibility, full flexibility for my about positions. So let's keep the original idea. Yeah, let's just keep this. Okay, then uh, I'll just end here, and then we'll see how we can do to like C sharp sort numbers. Yeah, we, we could do like a, a, a normal sort to do this. I mean, first cut, what we can do is like this. If num2 greater than num, if num3 greater than num2, then what we can do is we could do a Yeah, no, this is not the ideal because we need to have a temporary variable. Yeah, you know what? Just let's just create the temporary variables. So if num three greater than num if num two greater than num three, what we do is we we'll, we we'll sort it out num three. Too bad it's not Python. Python I could just swap in one step. Okay, so we, we will just do a simple swap. <laughs> Don't need to do the, the complicated swaps. M1 will be num3. M1 may be num2. Num2 equals to M1. And then num3 equals to. Sorry, num2 equals to num3. And num3 equals to M1. So this will just swap the num numbers. So over here, it's the same thing. If num4 greater than num5. So actually, this one, we, we could just copy and paste this thing here. I mean, there will be some duplicates. Okay, if num4 greater than num5, yeah, actually, we just need one temp. Yeah, we okay, just swap the. Yeah, this calls for like a function reuse actually. So num4, num4 equals to num5. 5 equals to 10 1. Yep. We can um, just basically call, code out a new function, but then we could do this num5 and num6. Because num5 would be the biggest number already. So yeah, so this one would be num5. 5 would be num6. Num6 would be this. Yeah, so we swap num4 and num5, then we swap num5 and num6. Okay, then we will need to check num4 and num5 again. Yeah, because there might be some swaps. We actually need to check these two again. Let's just check twice. And this 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 will definitely work already. It's a bubble sort. So um that's all for that's all we have. Five, five, six, ten up. Okay, let's try this and see whether it works. And let's go. So this toggles all bulbs. Oh wow, I won already. Okay. <laughs> that was easy. So this this kind of toggles all bulbs. Hey, why is it not doing its job? So this two and five, very nice. Two, three, and five. This was shift left. Okay, I guess I need to make a clause over here. So it's like in the start, okay. Uh when we do the compute win sequence, right? Wow, start config. Uh, we want to make sure this if, let's say we already won the game right generate win sequence that is not the same as go config yeah 
So it is the same as go config. We keep redoing and redoing and redoing until it's different because we don't want the the game to end right, right before we started. So this toggle all. This is a toggle one, two, and four. Awesome. This is toggle one and two. There we go. Yes. All right. We coded the bulb level. That was fun. <laughs> and yeah, I think I'll end my stream here. And next week will be interesting. Next week we'll be coding. Uh, so the next week's level will be these four buttons will control an up, down, left, right on the screen, which will correspond to, you know, this kind of like um, rhythm games. The, button, the arrows will go down and then the up, down, left, right will, you must click on the button exactly at the same time as the arrow goes through the goes through the screen uh goes through that that bar if not you have to keep restarting and restarting so that will be very interesting and yeah catch you all next week for stage five which i think will be the last stage of four buttons then i'll push it out for people to play already okay and yeah that was a fun day coding see you all around bye bye